How, how long? All day, every day, and how long? And in every situation. Bless the Lord. All right. Good, good, good. We are. We are that to our visitors and our brothers and sisters who are checking us out on Facebook, on uh, YouTube, on what, whatever. However you're looking at us, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise God. All right. We are uh, dealing with the subject of having joy in unjoyful times. All right. Again, I made up the word unjoyful. Just just hang with me. All right. Today, um, I want to talk about getting control of your life. Getting control. That's the topic, if you will. Getting control of your life. Yeah. I want to uh, I want to start. I'm not going to not going to talk about the scripture right now, but let's look at Matthew chapter five, verses one through five. We've been dealing with this. The Lord has just got me dealing with the, what we call the Beatitudes. Um, do we have anything on the screen? We don't have any. Greg, none of the screens are up. We don't have anything here. All right, Matthew 5, 1 through 5. All right, let me get there. Okay, they got it up. Okay, here we go. Um, yeah, here we go. Listen to this. And this is, again, the Beatitudes. Verse 5 is what I really want to focus in on for this, the topic of this message. I don't know if you've ever thought about it before, but listen to this. And seeing the multitudes, he went up to the mountain, on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And now this one, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. <sighs> Getting control of your life. I'm going to come back to this. Yeah, I'm going to come back to that, that verse in a moment. Persons who do not have control of their life cannot have joy it's impossible to have joy when you have no control of your life and what i'm talking about is self-control people who do not operate self-control in any kind of way when in, in, you think of any way are living a life of confusion stress and disorder and we talk about joy. Jesus gives you joy. But if your life is out of control, I don't care how much Jesus you have. If you don't operate in, if you're not operating with self-control, I don't care how holy you think you are, you can never have joy. You can't because because control. Well, let me let me go here. Um, the, the fact is, there, there's many people, many, many people in the church who live a life of self-control of, of, of without control and wonder why they have no joy and why things are not going the way that they want them to go think about it a person who cannot control their tongue will always have strife they'll create strife and what you put out you're gonna get back uh, you know, brother and sister Smith, love each other, love each other. There's no question about it. They even got the same colors on today. I don't know if y'all planned that or not, but, but they got the same color. Always sitting together. I mean, love each other. But if he comes at her the wrong way, if he, if he says the wrong thing to her, I know her. It is movie star here. First of all, you know, she, first of all, she's going to wonder, okay, what's wrong with you? Eventually, what's going to happen is she ain't going to take it too much longer. She ain't going to take that very long. She's going to come back at him. And so now we have not just him out of control. We have a home that's out of control. Y'all with me here? And a home that's out of control was a home without joy. Yeah. You, you cannot have joy. There's no peace. You cannot have joy if your life is out of control. You have to operate self. You can't say everything you want to say. 
You can't do just what you want to do. I say, whatever comes up, come out. You a fool. That's, that's right. You a fool. You don't, you, you, the, the scripture says that a wise man withholds even his own anger, but a fool lets it out. And so let me, let me give you here. Let me give you this, these two scriptures. Let's go to Proverbs since I'm talking about Proverbs. Proverbs 25, verse 28. Proverbs 25, 28. You cannot have joy. You cannot have peace if your life is out of control. You, if you can't control your spending, you cannot have joy. I mean, how many of us have bought stuff and then stayed up at night hating that we bought it? Most of us. Yeah, most of us. I mean, wanted it and eyes, as my mother would say, eyes too big for your, for your, you know, for your stomach, whatever, you know. And, and after you got it, oh my God. You, you, and then if you try to sell it back, you, you sell it back and get, and you sell it back for cheaper than you bought it for. Yeah, it, it's, you cannot have, you cannot have joy. You cannot have peace if your life is out of control. Listen to this. Whoever, who, whoever has no rule over his, not someone else's. See, that's the problem. We want to control other folk. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down. Now, that's bad, but also without walls. That means that the enemy can come in at any time and take what little bit you got left. If you can't control your own spirit, if you can't control your spending, if you can't control your mouth, if you can't control your life, you're like a city that's broken down. How many broke down folk you know? I know a lot of them, and a lot of them in church. They broke down, and they're wondering why. You know, why am I always in this trouble? Why am I? Why do things always not work out for me? Because you're not operating in self-control. You're like a city broken down without walls. Go to this scripture. Go to Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 16, 32. Proverbs 16, 32. Come on. All right, listen to this. Is it up there? Good. Listen to this. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, the strong. He who, who rules, he who rules his spirit is better in essence than he who takes a city. He who is slow to anger. You got some people just pop off at any little thing. You know, it, some people are just thin skinned, just, you know, want to be mad, want to be angry about any little thing, anything. You know, you know listen, um, went riding here today, and after I, I was in Sam's at in North Augusta, and so I ride riding here today, and why do slow people find themselves in front of me? They just find themselves. I mean, it's like we're going to pull over here and then slow down when we get over here in front of you just to make you, I mean, just to make you mad. <laughs> it just, I went, well, I, I, I mean, just to get on your day, this and, and listen, but if you, and the scripture said, I've got, I had to remind myself of Bible study, self-control. <laughs> he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Now I'm in the car, blood pressure rising, temperature rising, and whatnot. They in front of me just relax and whatnot. I'm mad at them, and they don't even know I'm mad at them. <laughs> but it's better than the mighty, and he who rules his own spirit is better than he who can take a city. Why? Because the person who can take a city but don't have self control will lose it quickly. We, we not watch this. We not only get stuff operating in self control, we lose stuff we, because we don't operate in self control. How many marriages are broken up because somebody did not control their passions? Somebody did not control their speech, their language, their tongue, their attitude. How many homes have been broken up because somebody did not control? And then after they lose it, oh, baby, please come back. Oh, baby, please. Why? Ain't coming back to that same mess. Amen. And so we're talking about self-control. Now watch this. Um, go back to Matthew 5. I'm going to give you five things that you must have. We're talking about having joy. Um, you know, five, five attributes of self-control that you must have if you're going to have joy. Five attributes. 
and prayerfully we'll get through this today um, because next week we have the conference and I, I want to deal with the conference subject. All right. The first, the first thing. The first attribute you have to ha you, you have to operate in, in is submission. Submission. Matthew 5, verse 5. Submission. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. What does meek mean? What does the word meek mean? Humble. 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 That's good. Kind. Thoughtful. What'd you say? Mild, brother Rump. Right. That's what it doesn't mean. What the word actually means, the Greek word actually means is, watch this, controlled strength. It's two things. It means controlled strength or, I think somebody may have said it, and not or, gentle. Meekness is a person who has strength under control. I'm going to give you an example of that. The word actually means, the Greek word here actually means, meek, it means actually means, it means a person who has strength, but has that strength under control, a person who is gentle. What do we call a man who um, looks out for a woman? A gentle man. We, we, see, we say the word, we say that we use the term, but, but the term actually means that this is a man, he's a man, strong but he's gentle as it relates to a woman. It's controlled strength. The word comes from the reference of a horse that is tamed. The horse has power, much stronger than a man, much stronger. But because the horse has been tamed, he has strength, but his strength is under control. It's a reference to also an ox that is tamed or 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 uh, what is it has the has the reins put on them. That ox is strong, but because it's being controlled, the strength is being controlled. The ox is meek. We're supposed to what, what Jesus says is you are blessed. If you have the power to do something, but choose not to do it because you're operating in self-control. You have the power to cuss somebody out, but you don't do it. You may even have, watch this, a reason to cuss them out. A good reason. <laughs> a real good reason. But you hold your tongue. You have the power to retaliate over somebody who hurts you but you choose not to do it. It's power under control. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Let's go to Matthew chapter uh, 26, verse 47 through 53. Matthew 26, 47 through 63. There's no greater example in the world, I think, than this right here of what meekness is. Power, strength under control. Listen to this. This is Jesus. And while he was still speaking, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, this is Jesus, one of the twelve with, uh, with a great multitude of, with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and elders of the people. Watch this. Now, his betrayer had given them a sign saying, whoever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him. Immediately, he went up to Jesus and said, greetings, rabbi, and kissed him. This was Judas who did this. But Jesus said to him, friend, why have you come? Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Now watch this. And suddenly one of those who were with, the, with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Now you know he wasn't going for his ear. He was trying to cut the head off. I can tell you, I'll deal with the reason why he cut off his ear later. I'll deal, deal with that later. Anyway, but verse 53, watch this, watch this. This is it. But Jesus said to him, Put your sword in its place. For, for, for all, 
just put the sword in this place. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Let's watch this. Or do you not think that I cannot now pray my father, pray to my father, and he will provide me with more than 12, le more than 12 legions of angels. Watch this. Get, get this. How then could, uh, uh, how, how then the, this, how then could the scripture be fulfilled that, that this must happen? Let's go back to 53 again. I must, we missed something. Yeah. Um, or do you not think that I could not, yeah, that's, that's it right there. Pray to the Father and he will provide me with more than 12 leads. Now, a legion was between 4,200 4, and 6,000. 4,200 and 6,000 was considered a legion, which means Jesus is saying, I could call 72, up to 72,000, more than 72,000 angels to defend me, but I'm not. So y'all going to take me because I am letting myself be taken. 72. Now, two angels destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> y'all got it? Two angels went into Sodom and Gomorrah. We don't even know if two or both of them destroyed it. It may have just been one. But two of them, we know, destroyed two cities. Can you imagine what 72,000 angels can do? Jesus says, if I want to, I could pray to my father and he would send me more than. I ain't wipe this whole planet off. If I speak, this whole planet will go into just evaporate. But I'm not going to operate in that strength. That's meekness, y'all. When you have the power to lash out, but you choose not to do so, that's meekness. And that's the reason why Jesus says, these people will inherit the whole earth. Meekness is, watch this. Did I give y'all the first word? Submission, that's it, submission. What Jesus does is he submits, what does he submit to? His Father's will. Now, what is submission? Submission means I may not want to. I may not even like it, but I'm going to submit to the authority, submit to you. Why? Because I choose to. I don't have to. Jesus didn't have to die on the cross. Y'all know that, right? He, he could have, you know, he could have said to the father, you you find another way. I ain't doing this. Not for them. Them same folk who you know, laugh at me, them same disciples who talk about they with me all the way. And I'm going all the way to the cross with you. And then soon as fire, the, the fire get hot, they go another way. I ain't doing this for them. Y'all better be glad I ain't Jesus. That's the reason why Jesus is Jesus and I'm Greg. Because if it had been me, you know, and, and if I would have allowed, Dr. Williams, if I would have allowed myself to be crucified and they down on there talking about if you really out of Christ, come down. I'd have came down off the Christ, slapped them down, then got back up there again. I would have had to just, I'd have to prove I had to do something now. It wouldn't be no father, forgive them. <laughs> it wouldn't be. I'm just saying, y'all, oh, y'all better be glad it's Jesus and not Greg. And I'm glad it was Jesus and not y'all. <laughs> I mean, but that's meekness. That's what meekness is, is all about. It's about having the power, the strength, and even the right to lash out, but choosing not to do so. There ain't many people like that. Because most of us get caught up in ourselves. And, and, and pride is the biggest reason why people get mad. You, who you think you talking to? You must don't know who you're dealing with. See, that's all about pride. I'm, I'm from you from I'm from New York, not New York, New York. <laughs> that's it. When you always think that it's about pride, when you think you're right, you know, we we had we you know we had uh, and I don't know all the details, but we had a commissioner and a guy got into a, uh, a scuffle down at the you know, and the commissioner made it say, "You don't know where I'm from. I'm from so." So, everybody from somewhere, you can still get your butt whooped. Oh, I'm sorry. But it was in my, I mean, thank you, Lord, I said, but. <laughs> oh, Y'all know, know what I'm saying? It's about pride. It's about proving ourselves right and getting our point across. Go, I got to have the last word. 
That's not surrender and that's not meekness. I ain't no punk. That's brothers getting shot in the street right now. Brothers in jail right now because they ain't no punk. Am I right? I ain't no punk. Okay, now you got 30 years to life. You ain't no punk, but you something else in the prison because you punk. <laughs> you thought you wasn't no punk. Now you are. <laughs> Yeah, you went in as John, now you're Janie. You, listen, listen. A whole lot of people have messed up their lives because they would not surrender. They would submit, submission, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, sister. They practiced. You, you, it's not a one-time thing. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Now, it doesn't mean making yourself a doormat. You know, and, and yeah, okay, I, I, I know. Can y'all just go here? Go to, go to, uh, we're talking about submission. So let's do, do this because we always have to do this. Go to, go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Ephesians 5, 21. Y'all know this one. What does it say? Y'all know this one, submission? What does it say? Wives do what? All right, that's it. Submit, uh, no, first, first, verse 22, 22. Wives submit yourselves. To your own husbands as to the Lord. Isn't that what it says? All right. Because the husband is the head of the wife, and as the Christ, you know, as all that kind of stuff. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church, which means Jesus, as Jesus submitted to the Father, the husband should submit to the Father too. But as 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 but the wives are supposed to submit to their own husbands. Now go back to, and I went there too fast, 21. Go back to 21. Because we missed this one. Submit. Submitting one to uh, submitting to one another in the fear of God, which means now that's that's gender neutral. That ain't got nothing to do with husbands or wives. That means everybody got to submit. That means the husband's got to submit to the wife, and the wife's got to submit to the husband. It's not a wives submission only. Listen, listen. Um, and and this this happens in many cases um, with men if they're smart. <laughs> Um, when their wife is telling them, you need to go to the doctor. If that brother does not go to the doctor, submit to her wisdom and her love, he end, he'll end up dying fast. You need to go see some, we need to go to that. And, and, and sometimes the sister's got to manipulate. If you don't go to the doctor, you can't come to this room in any way. Um, but brother's got to submit. Some, it is a shame that you got to play those games to get a brother to because we don't like going to the doctor. But you got to submit. And then watch this. All of us. When you go to the doctor, you got to submit to his diagnosis and treatment. I, ain't, I went to the doctor, but I ain't taking that medication. What you go to the doctor for then? And start, and if, if that's the case, don't complain that you're still sick. I don't want to hear it. You got to submit. Everybody submitting one to another. And to support as well. That's it. It means to undergird and support. So it's not you being weak and it's not you being a doormat. Submission means, again, undergirding, supporting. But it means, watch this. It means yielding yourself to the authority that's above you. Police officer pulls you over. Whether you're right or wrong, he pulls you over. What you gonna say? Sir. Sir. I don't care if he's younger than me. Yes, sir. License and registration. Yes, sir. May I please? Yeah, it's, it's in my, may I please? You know, and I've got my recorder. I'm recording the whole thing. Now, my point is we submit, well, let's not even go there. If, uh, Whatever direction you go in, uh, if you're at the light, the light is out and the police officer is standing there directing traffic. I ain't submitting to nobody. I ain't a police officer standing there directing traffic. If you stop, you just submit it. If you don't stop, you can the ticket. You pay the consequences. There's always consequences. Why we talk about self-control when you are out of control and you do it your way. 
submission. That's the first one. Second, second, second thing you have to have. Get this. Vision. A life that is out of control is a life that has no vision. Go to this scripture. Y'all know this one also. Proverbs chapter um, 29, verse 18. If you're going to have joy and you're going to be, if you're going to have a life under control, you have to have vision for your life. Where there is no vision, listen to this. We say, King James Version says, people perish, but that's not really what it says. What it says is where there's no vision, the people cast off restraint. But happy, listen to this, joyful is he who keeps the law or who, watch this, walks according to the direction that God has already planned. Vision gives you direction. Vision keeps you from going off course. Vision keeps you focused on where you're going rather than where you've been and what you want on the sides. Gives you direction. It keeps you focused. What do I have here? Vision, watch this. Uh, yeah, gives you direction, which keeps you going in, uh, go from, from going out of control. Vision keeps you from going off course. Uh, and also, watch this. Vision connects you with people. <laughs> who are going in the same direction you're going in and want the same thing you want. So that when, watch this, when you get weak, they can pull you along. Vision, we're going in the same direction. <sighs> Me and a friend were talking on yesterday. We marry for the wrong reason. We marry for looks. We marry for money. You know, he can take care of me. He's a good provider. She, you know, she's, she'd be a good mother, that kind of, that's not the, there's a whole lot of people who be a good mother. A whole lot of people who look good. What is your status? You don't marry for we and we fall in love. We say in love with that. Those that you marry for purpose because purpose is vision. You marry because you're going in the same direction and you want the same thing so that when one person gets weak, the other person can say, OK, baby, I got you. When one person is is is, is tired, the other person can hold them up. And, and carry them along. But if you're going in different directions or if you don't have the vision, if you don't have vision, if you don't know the direction that you're that you're going in, you're just all over the place and that's out of control and therefore there is no joy because you'll never have peace, Brother Rob. Oh, Lord. No, no, I know that's right. No, if you think you can do what you want to do, see, that's the wrong attitude anyway. No, um, you know, I, <laughs> after Kathy passed away, oh, this girl made me so mad I wanted to slap her. I did. She, she, hit me, she hit me at the wrong time. Kathy passed away, I think it was like eight, nine months, something like that. And sister said, you know, when are you dating? In Alabama, I was taking care of my mother. No, it was, it was less than that because my mother passed away six months after Kathy. So it must have been like five, six, five months or something like that. You know, you dating yet? No, my wife just passed away. Um, but whenever you start dating, you know, let me know because I need help with these kids. She had four. Her and her sister were competing. Who could have the most? Different, different fathers. I need, and she said, I need help with these kids. And you think I'm over here? Wait, what did you say? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I heard her. That's why we didn't get married. She had, I need help with that. Because her, for her thing, she was looking for somebody to help her with kids. She had them four baby daddies. Amen. Vision. Vision. And she was nice looking girl. But if there's no vision, you go after what you see. Watch this. If you don't have vision, watch this. If you if you don't have vision, you'll have children. Watch this. I'm talking about husband and wife will have children that have to go to college. But you'll spend college money today. On stuff because there's no vision for less what's coming on later down the road. But people who have vision see their child graduating from college. Now, how do they graduate to from college? They go to college. They're able to pay for college, which means you're putting money away now for 18 years from now. Y'all hear what I'm saying? 
That's vision. It keeps you going in the, in the right direction, but it keeps you controlled, controlled spending. Most of us, they say that most people in America have less than $2,000 in the bank account. Less than $2,000. Now you make thirty, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year, but less than $2,000 in savings. Why? Because we are spending out of control. So the so 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 the so uh, 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 the, the Fed just raised interest rates to keep you from spending, to stop curtail your spending. Now you got to pay more for stuff because if you keep doing what you're doing, the economy is going to get shot. How many how many people's personal economies are shot because they are out of control spending? And so again. Vision, you got to have vision. Everybody, and I keep talking about this, everybody, everybody ought to have an individual vision and your individual, if you're married, your individual vision ought to line up with your, your spouses or your family. You ought to have vision for the family. We want to be, we want, we, listen, we got four children. We're in this three bedroom house. We, these children are growing. They're going to need their own. They're going to need another house. So we got to do what we got to do now to prepare for two years from now, three years from now, when we buy another house. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Okay, uh, this is July. Next month, kids going to school. That means kids need clothes and school supplies. Vision says, uh, what is vision? What is vision? Maybe I should ask that. What is vision? Insight and foresight. That's good, y'all. Vision is seeing before you get there. That's vision. That's what, and I, I got a new definition. I got a new understanding of, of the word provision. W women want a man who can provide. A man who can pro provide is a man who pro means before, vision means to see, who can see before trouble comes. Who can see before you get there what you need when you get there. It's not just a person who put bread on the table, food on the table and clothing on your back. You need to be with somebody. You need to have somebody. You need to be around people who have a prophetic mind to see before the trouble comes so that when the trouble comes, they already have an answer and a solution to fix it. Y'all with me here? That's what vision is about. So the scripture says without vision, people cast off restraint. What does that mean? They do everything. They do anything. They just there's no there's no control. If you want to have joy in your life, you have to have vision. And that's the reason why people perish, because they have no direction, because they're off. They're, they have no control. Come on, bro. Listen, work all your life and then you got to go and go on Facebook uh, to get what is it called? Go fund me to get strangers to pay for your for the for your burial. Your, 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 your family's got to beg strangers to bury you because you didn't have vision and foresight to know that you're going to die one day. So you get, didn't, get, didn't get any, any life insurance or you didn't even put anything away. That's sad. And it's extremely sad when it happens to folk in church. When they got to get to church to help bury you because you didn't have... <laughs> Because you were so concerned about heaven, you forgot about the fact you gotta you gotta have a body after this body dies, you gotta have a place to bury it. Not having not having not seeing common sense. That's it. You gotta have vision if you want to have joy. Without vision, there's no joy. Brother Ron. Yeah. One direction and it's dark. Tunnel vision. It's not just one direction, but it's, well, there's two directions. There's backwards and forwards and it's dark. And so you're bumping into stuff, just bare, just trying to survive. How many people are just trying to survive? Most people. They're just doing just enough to make it from day. That is not the life that God meant for you to be living, is it? You can't say that you're living abundantly if you just surviving, just from bumping into, you know, bumping and falling, slipping, sliding. No, that is not the life that God, that Jesus died for you to live. That's tunnel vision. 
Okay. Which is no vision at all, actually. The, no, no, the point number three, get this one. If you're going to have joy, self-control requires, we already said it, denying yourself. A denial of yourself. You got to deny yourself of your passions. And passions, we don't think about sex when we, everybody thinks about sex. Passions means uh, your desire, your heart's desire to have something that God didn't intend for you to have or didn't intend for you to have right now, for you to do something that God didn't intend for you to do right now. We are in the state that we in now because Eve could not control her passion and Adam could control his toward her. She saw it, saw that it was good for food. It was pleasant to the eyes, passion. And good to make one wise. That's what the scripture says. So denying of self, write the scripture down. Uh, Matthew 16, 24. Y'all know this one. Let's go there. Matthew 16, 24. If you're going to have joy, you have to deny yourself. Now, that seems strange that, okay, I'm going to have joy, but I got to stop myself from it. Yeah, because joy is about long term. It's not about the right now. Happiness happens right now, but happiness can cause you to lose your joy. I'm happy right now, but then you find out, you know, a couple of weeks later, then the rest of your life could be messed up. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That's hard. If anyone, no matter who you are, desires to come after me, three things you got to do. First thing is deny yourself. Restrain yourself from what you want right now to get what God has for you later. I sometimes think about um, people are enjoy. Some people are just enjoying life. I mean, it seems like they're just enjoying it. Just you know, they're living lavishly and they're, you know, they're, they're, you know, the stars and, the, you know, recording artists and they're driving and they're living in these homes and they're living these lavish lifestyles. But then what does it profit a man to gain the whole world? And lose. Okay, so you're spending about 30, maybe 40, 50 years in luxury here but eternity in hell. That's not a good trade-off to me. That's, that don't sound like a good bargain to me, but that's, that's the, watch this, but that's what Satan is selling. Satan is selling, that's what television, tell a vision, is selling. It's telling a vision, you can have this and you'd be happy. That's the vision they're trying to sell. See, there's not just a, kingdom vision there's a demonic vision also satan will show you stuff it comes in your mind that's the reason why you got to bring your thoughts under captivity that's self-control because if you don't bring your thoughts under captivity restrain what you think your thoughts will go somewhere and you'll go with your thoughts and mess up your life deny yourself uh, um I was listening to, I, I like listening to audio books. I was listening to audio books the last two days. I started listening to one. And last, yesterday afternoon, yesterday evening, I was listening to it. And I was like, this is not good for my spirit. So I deleted it from my phone. That wasn't, you know, wasn't anything really. Yes, it was. It was bad for me. Y'all with me here? Now you can listen to the book and it probably wouldn't, fa wouldn't phase you one bit. But in the state that I'm in, you know, in the state that I want to be in spiritually, that wasn't good for my mind because I went to bed, even after deleting it, I went to bed thinking about the episodes that were taking place from the book that I was, y'all with my, y'all hear what I'm saying? Every television show ain't for you to watch. Every song, every radio station, sometimes you got to turn off the radio because it's just, it's, a, it's, 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 it's wreaking havoc on your spirit and your spirit is is rejecting is trying to reject it but your mind and your uh flesh likes it you got to deny your emotions like you got to deny 
yourself. And again, sometimes it's not evil. The stuff is not evil. It's just not good for you and not good for you right now. That's what fasting is all about. Nothing wrong with food. But there's sometimes that the spirit says, okay, you need to get away and get closer to God or uh, there's a word of, and you got to fast. That's denying yourself for a season to get where God, where God is trying to, trying to take you or hear what God is trying to say. Y'all, y'all understand? Y'all know what I'm saying. Deny yourself. Then he says, <laughs> this one gets me. Take up your cross. There's only two things you can do on a cross, do with a cross. You carry it and you die on it. We're called to do both. We're called to carry our cross. I'm not called to carry Silas's cross. I'm called to carry the cross that God gave me to carry. You carry your own cross. One of the things we try to do is we try to carry other folks' crosses. So you got yours and other folk. That's too heavy. Some folk are too heavy for you to carry. That's my point. Some folk you ain't supposed to carry. Again, I was talking to another friend. Uh, this is Wednesday. It must have been Monday or Sunday. And we were talking about the fact that, you know, she wants to go to uh, start a, go to, go to, go to, go to back to school and get a degree in psychology and counseling because she wants to know, uh, wants to be able to minister to people, but she also wants to be able to identify the fact that there are some people she can't help. And she wants to be able to direct them to the people that they need, you know, that they, to, you know, d direct them to a, a Sister McDonald or whatever case may be, who is, who is a clinician and who can better care for them. Because some, some folk, I can't help as pastor. And I tell them, I'm, I, I'm not trying to mess nobody up. You need to talk to somebody else. So I direct them right to Sister McDonald. And it's, your, their cross is too heavy. We sometimes think, and, and, and church members sometimes think, the, just talk to the pastor and he can fix No, I can't fix it. You too broke. You too broke. And sometimes, Brother Smith, it's not that they're too broken. Sometimes I got my own cross that's heavy on me right now, and I can't carry yours and mine at the same time. And I don't mind telling you, right now is not the time. I'm not in a position right now. And, and I, I promise you, you won't hear many pastors saying that. You won't hear many people saying that because we want people to think we're Superman. Yeah, I'm Superman, Batman, and Hawk all rolled up in one. I'm not. I'm not. And sometimes I need to talk to somebody too. So, okay, you come over here in the pastor's chair. Let me sit where you sit because I, <laughs> I need some help right now. You got to carry your cross. Everybody's got a cross, but everybody has a cross to die on to. What does dying mean? Giving up yourself. And then Jesus says, now you can follow me. Until you're willing to deny yourself, carry and die on the cross, you're not qualified to even follow him. That's powerful. Yeah, you gotta give up stuff. <laughs> Listen, it's, 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 it's amazing. There's a lot of folk in, you know, tell you, in church. I'm a follower of Christ, but you ain't denying your you. You can't control your tongue. You you, you know you your spendthrift. You think you, you think everything that you see you ought to have. You're not you're not a follower of Christ. You haven't done the first thing. You haven't surrendered or you haven't submitted. You haven't de de denied yourself. You're not carrying a cross. You're not dying on a cross. And you talking about you a follower of Christ? You got to be careful when you make these statements. Brother Rome. Oh, Lord. Let me tell you, do you really? Do, do, a, lot of, a lot of songs we sing, we just singing. We just, we just mouthing words. All to Jesus I surrender. All. <laughs> you won't pay your tithe. You just lie. You lie. I mean, OK, I need to say that, too. If you don't pay your tithe, don't ever sing that song. All to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. When I ask you to give a special offering, you get an attitude. Yep. Come on, y'all. Uh, 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 what's that? The consecrated cross I bear till death shall set me free. And then go home my crown to wear, for there's a crown. You ain't consecrated yourself. You ain't carrying no cross, and you ain't getting no crown. Brother Ron.
There you go. Because if you won't baptize, if your attitude is not baptized, you ain't baptized. If your, if your mindset is not baptized, if your, watch this, if your bank account is not baptized, you ain't been baptized. You're just going in the water getting wet. <sighs> Denying self. Let me, let's get to number four. Number four. This is one that most people, that, yeah, this is, you got, you got, what was the first one? Submission. What? Vision. Denying self. Yeah. Number four is, this is one that most of us have problems, well, we got problems with almost all of them, discipline. If you want to have joy, you got to live a disciplined life. Now, this is all kind of rolled up in discipline. Discipline probably, probably kind of is, is, is the, the key to all of them. Discipline. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. I got a little time. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 24. Discipline. You got to be disciplined. What I found is people who are undisciplined in one area normally are undisciplined in many other areas as well. People who don't clean, who can, y'all heard me say this before, if you can live in mess, you can live with mess. I've, I'm, I've just seen that to be, I've proven, I mean, I've proven, but I've seen that to be true. If you can live in a messy environment, your life is typically messy also. If you can live in it, you'll live with it. Listen to what Paul says. Paul says, do you not know that those who run in a race run, all run, but one receives a prize? Run in such a way that you obtain the prize. That's what Paul is saying. Let's keep going. And everyone who competes for a prize is temperate in all that. What does temperate mean? Controlled. That they are, that they are, what did you say? What did you say? Control. It, it means, listen, that you're not, you're not flighty. You're not, you're not going off the handle. You know how to control yourself. Everyone who competes for a prize is temperate in how many things? Not just in some, listen, listen, listen. You can't, you can't be a, uh, a, a heavyweight champion boxer if you don't eat right. You got to discipline what you eat. You can't be a heavy, a heavy champion, heavy, heavyweight boxer if you don't exercise. If you don't get up in the morning. You can't be a millionaire if you stay in bed to 12 o'clock. Temperate in all things. Now, now, now they do it to obtain a perishable prize, but we an imperishable crown. Let's keep going. Therefore, listen to what Paul says. I run thus. This is how I run. Not with uncertainty. I know what my vision is. I know the prize that I'm going to get. I know where I'm going. I know what I'm going to get. Thus, I fight not as one who beats the air. I, listen, I'm hitting something. I'm hitting targets. I'm reaching goals. I'm achieving something. But I discipline my body and bring it uh -oh, under subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself have been disqualified. Wow. I don't want to preach to y'all and y'all go to hell. Y'all go to heaven and then I go to hell. Hey, come on, sister. We're going to do that. We'll do that. Yeah, we'll do that. Listen, you got to discipline your, Paul says, I discipline my, my body. But prior to him saying that, he's already let us know he's, he's running, disciplining his mind. His thoughts are disciplined. He knows where he's going. He's, he, he knows where he's going. He knows the goal he's going after. He knows the prize he wants to go after. So he says, my body follows my mind and my spirit. I bring it all under subjection. <sighs> I discipline my body and bring it under subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself have become disqualified. You got to live a disciplined life. You want to lose weight? You can't eat as much all times of day and night. Waking up at 12 o'clock in the morning talking about you making, you going to eat some, 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 some greens. <laughs> but you want to lose weight. Y'all know folk do it. Y'all know it. Frying chicken at 11 o'clock at night. What you? Yeah, idiot. But you want to lose weight. Okay, I'm, I, I, look, I ain't scared of y'all. I ain't scared of y'all. You know, you got to. <laughs> listen, there is, if, there, if, you, if you, listen, Paul says, I know what I'm going after. And because I know what I'm going after, I know what it takes for me to get there. Dr. Williams. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You gotta read it. Yep. And the love of money is the root of all. all, not just some. everything that's it when you love what is it it's the root of it, it when you love money money will, will uh, well okay i can't think of a better a better uh example of than of, for for me to use than the oj song for the love of money a woman will sell her precious body a man will rob his mama for the all of that it's the root of all because it's it's undisciplined life. It's a life that's non-disciplined. You gotta have discipline. Last thing, last one, we're gonna go. Good, good time. I told you sur submission, but the last one is surrender. You gotta surrender to the Holy Spirit. Surrender your life. If you wanna have joy, you wanna have your life self a life of self-control. It's the it's, you gotta be you gotta be controlled, surrender to the Holy Spirit. Listen to this. Go to um, Romans chapter 8, verse 14. And then we'll go to Ephesians. Romans 8, 14. Romans 8, 14. You got to surrender your life to the Holy Spirit. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Led. You got to be led. Surrender led by the spirit means you don't you don't plot the course for your life you let the spirit do it that you don't set the agenda the holy spirit does it let's type let's tag that one with ephesians ephesians chapter 5 uh verse 18 ephesians 5 18. watch this one this one gets me y'all know this one too ephesians 5 18. um and do not be drunk with wine which is dissipation yeah, it causes you to do every, all kind of crazy, but be filled with the Spirit. What Paul is what Paul is saying, Paul, Paul is saying is, your life has got to be intoxicated, or you have to be intoxicated with the Holy Spirit, because people who are intoxicated are out of control. Now I just told you to be in control. But when you are intoxicated with the Holy Spirit, that means you surrender control to the Holy Spirit and he controls everything in your life. What you say, what you do, who you hang out with, how you how you say it. When you are intoxicated with the Holy Spirit, you don't stand on your own. It's the Holy Spirit that's holding you, that's keeping you. If you want to live a life of joy, you got to have those five things. What's the first one? Submission. Two. Vision. Three. Denying yourself. Four. Discipline. And five. Surrender to the Holy Spirit. You want to have joy. That's how you have it. Brother Silas. What was that now? When you're intoxicated with the Holy Spirit, the, you you give up control. It controls you. Yeah. yeah what, do, what do they say about people who get filled with wine? Yeah, who get, you know, who get drunk? It's the, it's the alcohol talking. Have y'all heard that? Yeah. People get, well, yeah, what, what did we call it? Liquid courage. Yeah. They say things that they would, that they're thinking, but they wouldn't say if they weren't intoxicated. The Holy Spirit works the same way. Remember, day of Pentecost, when the, when the Holy Spirit fell upon each one of them, they began to speak in other language languages that languages that they had not learned. Why? Because they were intoxicated with the Holy Spirit. When you are intoxicated, He controls you. You surrender control. And the Holy Spirit, when you're intoxicated with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will always lead you the right way. Yeah, that's it. The, the, the Holy, when you are surrendered to the Holy Spirit, not only, okay, have y'all, have, have y'all, y'all met, y'all seen people, not y'all, y'all have, y'all, it's not y'all, y'all seen people <laughs> who were intoxicated with alcohol and talked a lot, right? I mean, they just talked, they just said every, all kinds of stuff, but you, and loud, 
and loud. Talk a lot and talk loud and just say all. Oh. But you've also been around people who are intoxicated with the Holy Spirit and fell asleep. Right? Because sometimes he'll make you shut up. What you did and how you see, yeah, the, 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 the Holy Spirit will make you speak when you should and shut up when you need to. And then when you say it, it'll be said, what the scripture says, seasoned with salt, not with your ego behind it, but with love so that the people, the person can receive it because it's coming not from you, but it's coming from God. Yes, sister. Yes. Yes, that's one of the fruits of, in, in Galatians chapter five, it's one of the fruit of the spirit. But this self-control, all of these attributes are what, what you, you, you cannot have self-control unless you have, unless you, sur unless you surrender. Have vision. What's the number three? Uh, denying self are disciplined. And so no, submission, yeah, submission, vision, uh, denying self, discipline, and surrender. That's self-control. You are not self-controlled unless you have all of those attributes. That, those are the five attributes of, of self-control that give you joy when you operate in them. But if you take one of those away, you won't have joy. You'll have a life that's out of control. This is good, isn't it? I started, you know, when I when the Lord gave me this message, I started to say, I need to preach this on Sunday because more people need to get it. But y'all got it. Right? So let's say it again. Submission, vision, denying self, discipline, and surrender. You do that, you're going to have joy. You'll have joy. It's no question. You will have joy. But if you if you don't operate in, if you lose one of those, you're going to be in trouble. You've been blessed. Give God a hand clap of praise. Bless the Lord. All right. Did Sylvia get you? Uh, did we? Okay, good. Yes, thank you. Get this here. All right. Uh, I'll give you some announcements. Um, sister, would you do me a favor? Come on up and sit up front. Um, the announcements. Next week, of course, we're going to be having the, um, the Conqueror's Conference. Um, just sit right up front here. Um, the Conqueror's Conference, uh, and that's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I'm speaking on Tuesday. Um, I'm going to be the first speaking on Tuesday, and uh, that starts at 6.30. I want you all to be here for that Tuesday night. It's going to be on Facebook, I believe, also, because I want you all to hear this message. And then Wednesday, we're going to talk about what I spoke about on Tuesday. Uh, so we will have midday Bible study. Remember, we're not having evening Bible study, but we'll talk about my message um, on Tuesday. I really want y'all to get this message because I believe it's where we are as a church, Macedonia, and where the church is, the collective church is as well, as we're talking about ministry. And we're saying post-pandemic, let me say this, this is not post-pandemic. There's an uptake in people getting infected. So please, please, please protect yourself. Wear your mask, uh, especially when you go in crowds. And if you can, don't go in crowds. Um, I mean, a number of people that I know now have it and just getting over it or whatever the case may be. Don't let it be you. I'm trying to stay away from y'all because <laughs> because I don't want to get it. Praise God. I've not by God's grace. I've not gotten if I had it. I didn't know I had it. And, uh, you know, and I, I'm trying not to get sick. And um, and so please and more, more hospitalizations and that kind of thing. Protect yourselves. So next week, again, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday is going to be the Conqueror's Conference. And so, but we will have midday Bible study. Um, I have the sign up sheet. We still, uh, we're going to get the uh, the dance class. We'll know, let you know when that's going to start. That's going to happen. Uh, some of y'all have a number of persons signed up for that. And so we'll let you know about that. But I mentioned on um, Sunday about uh, fire, our fire and fellowship, um, where we're, we're going to be going out to the Felton's farm and uh, firing our weapons and that kind of thing. We're working on getting, before you even go out there, we're working on getting um, someone to come in and teach uh, firearm safety before you even take your gun out there. We want you to know how to use your gun 
and uh, all that kind of stuff. And so if you want to sign up for that, we need a limited amount of people that can go. Um, you can sign up uh, today. We'll have this in the back all, uh, as well. Silas, would you put this one in the back, please? Yeah, back just back on the table there. Um, what else do we have? Yes. Uh, anything else? Oh, tickets for the, uh, you want to, do you want to say anything about that? Yes, please. Silas, do me a favor, hand her the mic as you're walking back, and then you can get it on your way back up. Hey, Carla. Hey, thank you. Good afternoon. Um, as you all have heard, some of you all may have heard, we're celebrating Pastor's 23rd uh, pastoral yeah. anniversary. Um, yeah. We have a gospel recording artist, Jason Nelson. Uh, I promise you this will be a treat. Uh, September 9th, 6.30 p.m., the doors will open. Uh, we, we will be at First Baptist Church of Augusta. That's on Walton Way Extension. Tickets are $60 individually, couples, 100, and reserved seating of eight for $400. We have created multiple ways you all can get tickets. Of course, you can get tickets from persons selling tickets, the church office, also, we created a QR code, so you're welcome to use a QR code for your convenience. However, if you use the QR code, there are surcharges, okay? So be mindful of that. The attire is formal, semi-formal, at least business, business at least, if you know, in dress. Uh, if you have any questions, please see me in reference to the event, and I'll be happy to sell you a ticket. Come out and enjoy with us. Fire is on August the 6th, the first Saturday in August. Yep. Thank you, Sister Diadnack. All right. I think that's all for now. Um, come on, let's stand. Um, you, I want you to come right up front here. Gloria, if you come up, I want you to stand with her. Who else? Zeller sisters. Y'all come on up too. <laughs> 